lead generation part. All right, so we are gonna cover some ways that you can improve your lead generation, improve your efficiency, and talk to more people in less amount of time, okay? So let me share a slide here. So you've probably been to events, uh, you certainly know people, because there's someone on this call that fits this description, that they just have, they've been like the Cal Ripken of lead generation, where they just lead generate almost like a machine. And you kind of look at them and go like, there must be something different about them, because they can do that. And I don't seem to be able to. Is it possible that they might have a different perception of time? Maybe. You know, and I mean that in terms of like, they might be, you know, maybe they're slightly better at committing to a time block and sticking with it. But for the most part, they're just like you. They just figured out how to use the way our brains work to make it something that you do all the time. Um, so I am going to go through this real quick. And this is setting the stage. Like if you wanna become one of those people up on the stage at family reunion where Gary goes, and here comes, uh, you know, Betty Lou Big Pick and Betty Lou, you have hit your lead generation schedule um, every week that you've worked for the last three years. Tell us how you did that. I am sure Betty Lou is incorporating some of the things we're about to go over. So one of the most critical parts is you want to set a powerful environment. You want to engage all of your senses and satisfy all of your senses comfort levels while you set out to lead generate. So the way that you do that, it's critical that you have a clear line of vision with no distractions, even in your peripheral vision. So it is really important. You do not have stacks of unopened mail. You do not have the file that's supposed to close tomorrow, like uh, the sitting in the distance or open on your computer. Um, you cannot have the tickets for the concert you're going to. Uh, where your friend just bailed and said they're not going to go. No, you, none of that can be in your peripheral or line of vision. You want an incredibly clear space. Um, I'm looking at my mad scientists out there. They're like, oh no, I love having all my stuff around me. You know, uh, no, if you want to be an efficient, incredible lead generator, this is a time where you need clear vision. You want a representation of your big why in front of you. That could be a dream board. It could be a picture of your family. It could be uh, the logo of the charitable organization that you wanna create for yourself. You, know, you want some representation of big Y in front of you. You want a mirror in front of you. A mirror is critical. It has been shown over and over. You will smile more when there is a mirror in front of you than if you do not have a mirror. And if you're doing lead gen over the phone, smile, smiling comes through. People can, people hear you and your voice and tonality in a different way when you're smiling than when you're not smiling. So you, it's very critical to have that mirror. You may also have your scripts in front of you. Um, you could possibly have, uh, you know, a, a uh, appointment target goal in, in front of you. But you want only powerful things that are shoot, you know, pushing you towards why you're doing this in your vision and no distractions in your vision. Um, you want to have a scent, one of your favorite scents, and this is very underutilized. And if you've done any research on how human brains work, our sense of smell is way more powerful than we give it credit for. So if you pick one of your favorite scents, and get a high quality candle. I actually have one of my, I thought I had a candy. It looks like I have this, but I don't have the lid. So if you get a candle that has a lid, um, oh, there's the lid. And that scent is just for lead generation. So this, this candle here, Lavender jasmine chamomile. Make that your lead generation candle. When you sit down to lead generate, you open the lid. You don't even have to light it. If it's a quality candle, you're going to smell the scent anyway. Um, 
and you leave it open. And as soon as you're done lead generating, you close it. Guess what you'll do? You'll train yourself that when you smell lavender chamomile, you're in lead generation mode, but it will keep you present in the moment of what you're doing and you will stay engaged longer and prospect longer. I know it sounds funny. If you feel like it and have the time to do the research, you'll be shocked at what you find. Um, hearing, so you wanna put your phone on do not disturb, especially if you're lead generating from your cell phone. You have got to put it on do not disturb. So do not disturb, no text messages or phone calls will come in other than the ones you've designated as an emergency number. Um, you're not going to have a, a, a purposeful where you get in that groove and you keep everything going. If you have distractions, either visual, text, uh, phone calls, or people coming in and talking to you, it, it will throw you out of your groove and you will not stay with it and you will not get it done. So the other, so you want to have phone, this is part of hearing and uh, sight, I guess, because you'd see it coming in. Um, so put your phone on do not disturb and put on music on low volume. I would say probably secondary to smell. Um, this is the other underutilized uh, factor that can keep you lead generating. So millions of stores, dentists, uh, um, even movie theaters, uh, restaurants, all these places are not supermarkets. They're not playing music for fun. They're playing music because it's been proven over and over that people will spend more time and they will spend more money if music is playing. There's more to it than that, but I know all of you right now can relate to that immediately. So pick some of your favorite music that you know by heart. Um, this isn't a time where you want to put on that new fusion jazz guy that does scat, you know, because then your subconscious is going to want to be hearing the new and it'll be distracting. If you put on all your favorite music from middle school and high school that you know by heart and it's just playing on a low volume, you will prospect longer and you'll stay engaged with what you're doing longer than if you were doing it in silence. So that, um, you know, I have a couple of clients that are pretty hardcore uh, lead generators and they have several signs on their door, but one of them is if you hear music playing, do not even think about knocking on this door because they understand that every time they're interrupted, they lose hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars for a 30 second interruption from what they're doing. So get that music on taste. So taste, um, and you guys hear me talk about this all the time. Uh, I can say that um, my, this made a significant change in my life. At all times, I have water in my peripheral vision. And at all times, I have some type of snack right in my peripheral vision. And they're there. It doesn't, I may not eat them. I usually drink it. You guys see me drinking all the time. In the morning, I have coffee. In the afternoon, I usually have a hot tea. But just having them in your peripheral vision, if you have a banana and a glass of water and your favorite drink right there, um, it satisfies the part of your subconscious that seeks comfort at all times. This is tied in with Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. If you would like to do more investigation in that, please do. But we are creatures of habit. We want predictability. We do not like limbo. We like to know that we're going to be comfy, that our, we're going to be in the temperature that we like. We are going to uh, be in a position that we like. We are going to have our food and drink, and we're going to be able to go to the bathroom. Believe it or not, that's like a major part of our subconscious mental energy every day. So when you have your temperature set at the right temperature, that's part of touch actually, when you've got your, um, your drinks and food nearby, when you're using a timer and you know you're gonna take a break, you'll get to go to the ladies' room or the men's room, it actually will keep you engaged while you're lead generating. And finally, you have to satisfy your, uh, your sense of touch. 
So the, one of the reasons my lead generation candle lid was over where I coach is this is currently what I have been holding to satisfy my touch. I usually prefer, um, I used a rubber duck for a long time. I've used a squeezy ball from a title company that was like a globe. I used a squeezy ball that was a, um, actually in the shape of a house. I've had one of those muscle man squeezy ring things. I had a Nerf uh, basketball with a little Nerf hoop, but that Nerf ball was very, you know, so for some reason right now, I was in the mood for something cool and metallic and ridged. So this is my current little uh, thing that engages that sense of touch. Fidget spinners work, um, but it, when you occupy, when you occupy your hand with something, you're going to stay engaged in what you're doing longer. If you have, if you have nothing going on with your hands, you're going to get fidgety. You're going to be like, oh, let me check Facebook. Oh, uh, let me, da, da, da. oh, you know what? Um, let me pause real quick. But if your hand is fooling with something, you'll be able to keep your focus longer. The last thing I'm going to say, well, the second to last thing I'll say, stand when you're lead generating whenever possible. So the more you can make lead generation a little bit different than what you're doing the rest of the day, the more likely you are to do it and and meet the time that you have set for yourself. So only having that candle open during lead gen and standing when you lead generate and yet sitting for the rest of your day, that is going to train you. Oh, when I'm doing this and smelling that, I'm looking for business. You just train yourself what to expect. Standing is better because we project better when we are standing. And one of the minimizers on phone calls is body language, tonality. Many things are taken out in your communication by phone. So when you're standing, you're going to project, you'll be in full voice. You can remind yourself to put your shoulders back because you have your mirror right there. You're gonna smile and you're gonna come across as curious, engaged, genuine, the people that you are. So use that to your advantage. So final thought, and I know those of you who've been with me for a while, you know what I'm going to say. Use a timer. Use a timer. If you want to lead generate consistently all the time, use a timer. This is a complex um, subconscious interaction in, that impacts our behavior. And I am not a behavioral specialist. I'm not a doctor. Um, and yet I know how we can use this to our advantage. So again, as I mentioned, in life every day, we are seeking patterns, predictability. Is that safe? Is it unsafe? Do I know them? Do I not know them? Who's that? What's that? Who, who, you know, what, what am I hearing? What am I seeing? And we're processing millions of bits of information every second. Um, we do not like limbo. Think about when you were supposed to hear back from a buyer's agent on whether they accepted the counter and they said, I'll call you in an hour and it's the next day. Do you enjoy that time while you're waiting to hear from them? No, you went on a great first date and you thought it was something promising. And uh, they say, oh, let's talk tomorrow. You don't hear from them or they don't even say that. They're like, oh, I had a great time. And you all leave and there's no next step. You're in that limbo. That does not feel good to anybody, right? So the, what we're talking about here ties in with this. If you're wondering, what does that have to do with what she's talking about? If you come in and you're like, that's it. I'm going to lead generate today. I'm going to go till I pass out. I'm going to go till I wet my pants. I'll put on the depend. I'm not even going to stop to go to the bathroom. And I'm just blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, don't even talk to me. I'm lead generating, mm -mm -mm, right? And then you start. And you actually do that, you know, so then you're stuck on the phone with someone that's a possible deal and you're about to wet your pants. That is not fun or comfortable, right? And then you, you hang up the phone and you're like, get out of my way, where you might have to get a key for the bathroom. And it's like, oh, and then you go in there, you're dying of thirst, you're starving. When you do that, you actually train your subconscious that lead generation equals discomfort, uncertainty, don't know when it will end. Uh, you know, there's no pattern. There's no predictability. When you use a timer and you say to yourself, all right, I'm setting this timer for 55 minutes. 
and I'm going to make calls till that timer goes off. And then I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. I'm going to walk outside, go to Lay's room, refill my coffee. And that's my break. And then I'm going to set the timer again for 55. And I'm going to end every time with a break. Believe it or not, our subconscious likes little rewards. Um, can you see how that you're going to train your subconscious? Oh, lead generation. That's totally predictable. We go for 55 minutes and get a break. It's awesome. You get to go outside and say hi to the front desk lady. And then I do it again. But you're creating that scenario of you know what to expect. And it's predictable. And it is a pattern. And that is what human beings love and crave. So if you hear nothing else from what I'm saying today, use a timer, set your time that you're going to lead generate, and then honor that. And then always end with at least a three minute break, meaning you don't jump off the call with someone and go, oh, let me check if the appraisal came in. Let me get the stuff off the printer. Oh, I got to run out the door. No, for at least three minutes, you're going to listen to a song, walk outside, say hello to the front desk person, and you're just going to stop everything, maybe have a Hershey kiss. And then, then you can start acting like a lunatic again and running around in a frenzy. I prefer for all of you to move through the day with ease and elegance. So hopefully you're not doing the frantic stuff, but we all have our moments. So any questions about any of this? No, pretty clear. Any, um, so let's, if there's not questions, let's go to um, ahas. So again, I want three. So I need at least three of you tell me something you're taking away from this um, conversation we just had about how to actually lead generate. I like to go, hi, Bridget. Um, showing up ready, you know, do the research prior to and then dedicate the time. Yes. Be prepared with the environment set up. I think that's the, the, the biggest aha for me. Good. It's the environment's super critical. And I love that you shared that, you know, uh, and that is um, ultimately a part of it as well. Know who you're going to call before you even start. You know, uh, and so you've, you've done that prep work, you know what you're going to do, and then set that environment and set the timer. All right, so thank you for sharing that. Let's get two more, two more. I've, you guys are, you all need a more coffee this morning. Give me two more ahas. I think it's things just that are conducive to make you do what you need to do. Um, like I like the candle. I wouldn't have thought of that to associate a smell with something that you're doing. Yeah. I think, and it's funny, even the soft music, um, I found a meditation channel and like, that's just soothing. So yes. it helps your mood to have a more pleasant conversation, even if you, and obviously if you're lead genning, it's not a heated topic. Um, but like right. you said, how you get annoyed with an agent when they should have called you back the same day and they didn't. Right. So all yes. of that, all of that stuff to help your mood, um, is good and the timer. So yeah. because I, I and I know you don't want to hear this, <laughs> you don't want Legion to be punishing. That go no. to your room and don't come out till it's done. <laughs> That's right. No, I agree. Yeah, you don't want it to have that feeling. You want to have the feeling of you get to do this. You've made choices in your life to be a business owner, where you actually get the opportunity to dictate how many people you're going to help and how much income you'll make, and you've given yourself the opportunity to lead generate. It's actually a blessing. Most people go to work and they're told what to do. Right. You know, so good. I'm glad you had that, uh, that insight as well. All right. I want one more, one more and we'll wrap up. Not all at once. Can I take another one? You can, yes. We'll let, um, we'll let Margaret do one more. I like the dream board because you remember why you're doing this. Yeah. You need the visuals. Right, and that, it's really great when you have the dream board there, 
and someone yells at you or says, oh, I hate realtors, y'all are crooks, or you know, how do you get my number? You're, you should get a life, you know, whatever nonsense <laughs> you're going to hear. Whenever you lead generate at a, at a consistent high level, you're going to hear stuff like that. When you've got that dream board in front of you, you just look at that and look in the mirror and smile and be like, glad I gave him a new story to tell at dinner tonight. His family will thank me. On to the next one. And you just keep going. I'll call him while I'm on my cruise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. Well, this, uh, again, a topic near and dear to my heart. I could talk about this all day. There's other aspects, but the, the key ones we've covered here and uh, really get serious about not having visual distractions. Um, I even have a couple of clients that are the Einstein types that like having stuff everywhere. They actually brought a laundry basket into their office and right, right before lead gen time, shoop, everything goes in the laundry basket, it goes right outside the door. And then when they're done lead generating, it comes back in and they put their piles back up. But don't, don't let anything stop you from any of these because this can be the difference maker in you lead generating uh, consistently long-term and actually wanting to do it because you created that predictability and pattern uh, versus struggling with yourself like, oh, you know, I know I should lead generating, but I'm gonna do it. Um, oh, I've got to take care of this first. Oh, let me, let me check in with that appraiser before I start four hours later, you still haven't started. Oh, I may as well start tomorrow because now it's two o'clock. Yeah, so, if you want to cut out all that stuff, everything I share with you today will allow you to set that stage. And that's notice I said the efficiency. If you get hardcore about doing your, your chunks with the timer, chunks with the timer, and then follow it up with half an hour of lead follow-up, your sales will go up, hands down. I've never seen it not. Okay. Well, thank all of you guys for sticking around. Thanks for coming today. If you have any private questions, bring it, you know, send it to me before your coaching call or uh, let me know. Uh, but I have extensive um, firsthand experience in this and uh, also enhanced by coaches training. So please let me help you if you want to have a breakthrough in lead generation and lead follow up to achieve your goals next year. All right. We'll talk to you all later. Thank you.